Okay, so I got a few comments asking what the difference between strong artificial intelligence and weak artificial intelligence was. So I created a short video explaining the philosophical differences between the two and hopefully an easy to understand manner. I'll also cover the dichotomy between narrow artificial intelligence, NAI, and general artificial intelligence, AGI, as these terms are not the same as weak and strong AI. And as always, if this video was helpful, please consider liking it and subscribing using the link in the description. Uh, that really does help people who are asking about this and searching for this information find it. So first, what is AI? Well, there's not a uh, consensus definition of what AI is exactly, but the following definition by AI pioneer Alan Newell encapsulates a lot of the possibilities that AI is considered to be by researchers and philosophers. So AI is the field devoted to building artifacts that are intelligent where intelligent is operationalized through intelligence tests, such as the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale and other tests of mental ability, including tests of mechanical ability, creativity, and so on. Many philosophers believe AI is understood and defined by the goals of the field. The philosopher John Searle has proposed two goals of AI development to help us further understand and explore what it is. So these are weak AI and strong AI. First, weak AI are informational processing machines that appear to have all the mental capacities of living humans or animals, but are not alive. They do not have conscious experience. However, a weak AI system can pass what's called the Turing test. This is a test devised by the father of computing science, Alan Turing which is a way to prove a machine has human level intelligence, he thought. Basically, the test goes as follows. A woman and a computer are in different rooms, and a human judge must figure out which room contains the machine and which is the woman. He asks questions to both via email, or in that day, it's called teletype. And if he can do no better than 50-50 when delivering the verdict as to which room the computer was in, then that computer has passed the Turing test and can be said to have human level intelligence. At least that's what Turing thought. Strong AI is artificial persons or creatures that are alive, meaning they have all the mental capacities, including self-awareness and consciousness, we associate with something living. To help distinguish between the two, Cyril writes, according to strong AI, the correct simulation really is a mind. According to weak AI, the correct simulation is a model of the mind. So please note these terms are not to be confused with narrow AI and AGI. So let's cover what those are real quick. Now, when we say narrow AI, we mean the process of making a computer system that can do specific tasks or things that normally require human intelligence, such as understanding natural language and recognizing objects. The program can't do everything human intelligence can do, just a specific aspect of that. Examples of current narrow AI are image and facial recognition systems, chatbots and conversational assistants, self-driving vehicles, etc. On the other hand, AGI is a program or machine that can understand and learn any intellectual task that a human being can. The performance of these systems is indistinguishable from that of a human. The broad intellectual capacities of AGI would exceed human capacities because of its ability to access and process huge data sets at incredible speeds. AGI sets out to understand systems and perform them better than humans can, while narrow AI concerns itself with specific tasks or problems. There's also something called superintelligence, which could be a goal of an AGI or a combination of several AGI. Philosopher Nick Bostrom defines superintelligence as any intellect that greatly exceeds the cognitive performance of all humans in virtually all domains of interest. Bostrom treats superintelligence as general dominance at all goal-oriented behavior, becoming far superior in any activity than a human can do. Again, an AGI application can rise to a superintelligence level, or several AGI applications can combine to form superintelligence. Sometimes you may hear strong AI used interchangeably with AGI and narrow AI used interchangeably with weak AI. Uh, this is not exactly correct. It's theoretically possible to have AGI, but it doesn't classify as Cyril's strong AI. So are weak AI and strong AI philosophically possible? Can they ever exist and affect our lives? Well, I certainly think weak AI can, and is, uh, its development could be realized you know, as soon as the next couple of years. With strong AI, there's still some debate if humans can create things that are truly alive and conscious like us. And I'll be covering that in a video coming up uh, in much more depth. So make sure to subscribe if you want that using the link in the description. Cyril himself thinks that strong AI can never exist, but there are plenty of people who disagree with him. So uh, hopefully this clearly explains 
strong AI versus weak AI. Let me know if you think strong AI is possible. Uh, any questions or thoughts regarding AI? I'll be making more videos about that very soon. And thanks for watching.